right, in this video, we're going to look at problem number nine on the free ATIT's math practice test that I have posted over at idomath.weebly.com. My website has changed recently. It's the same material, but the new address is www.bcraftmath.com. Either way, you can get to the same site. Anyway, back to problem number nine. We want to arrange these fractions from greatest to least. In previous videos where I've done this back in the goal-based objectives, I wanted you to think about money. So nine eighths, let's take nine and divide it by eight. That is what nine eighths is. So nine over eight, nine divided by eight is 1.125. Let's repeat this process for all of the other fractions. Now I'm just using a TI-84 here to show you all of these decimals at one time. Of course, you cannot use this calculator on the T's math test, but we can get these decimals from any basic four function calculator. So if we think about money, the biggest one, greatest to least, the biggest one I see money wise, I think of that as like a dollar and 13 cents roughly. This is $2 and 33 cents. This is a dollar and 25 cents. This is roughly 83 cents. And this is around a dollar and 42 cents. So with that said, the greatest one that we see here is the $2 and 33 cents. So that is the seven thirds. We're going from greatest to least. The next one we have is going to be the $1 and 42 cents roughly. That's the 17 over 12 followed by the five fourths, that's the dollar and 25 cents. Then we have the nine eighths, that's the dollar and 13 cents. And then last but not least, the five over six. Now the five over six should definitely be our least one because that's the only fraction up here that is not improper. All of these other fractions up here are improper fractions, meaning our numerator is bigger than our denominator. So all of those fractions are guaranteed to be bigger than one. Whereas the five six, that fraction is not improper. This fraction here, five over six, when your numerator is smaller than your denominator, that fraction is guaranteed to be less than one. So there's our solution, but I do want to show you another way of doing this without having to rely on thinking about money. Let's look at all of these fractions again, and let's look at the denominators. We got an eight, a three, a four, a six, and a 12. The number 24 is a common denominator to all of these numbers. In fact, it is the least common denominator or also referred to as the least common multiple. 24 is the first number that eight can multiply into, three can multiply into, four, six, and 12. All of these denominators go into 24. So let's look at this first fraction. Nine over eight. Well, eight times three gives us 24, so let's multiply nine by three to get 27. Let's repeat this process for all of the other fractions as well. So again, thinking about 24, three times eight gives us that 24, seven times eight will give us 56. Our third fraction, five over four, four times six gives us 24, five times six gives us 30. The five over six, six times four gives us 24, five times four gives us 20. And then our last fraction, the way we get 24, we take 12 times two to get 24, 17 times two gives us 34. So these are the same fractions, except now we have common denominators. If you were to go and divide these in the calculator, you would get those exact same decimals we looked at earlier. But what we can do now is we can just look and see which one has the biggest numerator and that's going to be our greatest fraction. The 56 is the bigger numerator of all of these, which corresponds to that second fraction, the 7 thirds. Moving right on along, the next biggest numerator we have is the 34 here. So that's going to be the 17 over 12, which matches that one, followed by the next biggest one is 30 over 24, which is our 5 fourths. Then we have the 27 over 24, which is this first fraction of 9 eighths. As you can see, that matches nicely. And then last but not least, this is the smallest numerator, which corresponds to that 5 6, and that is our least fraction. And there you have it, two different ways of arranging fractions from greatest to least. Even if this problem was least to greatest, you would just reverse these answers. We looked at two ways. One way was thinking about money and dividing these fractions to get decimals. And then I showed you this second technique here of where we get common denominators and then we compare our numerators. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.